I'm about to go on the tour to Colombia. Yep, the country. And this should be very interesting. So I'm starting this recording right now before I even touch down. I'm gonna travel to the airport, get on a plane, and touch down in Bogota, Colombia. Now, the reason why this is gonna be interesting is because I have a lot of apprehension about the trip already. And what I mean is, the last two trips I had, I went with Rose Scholar, and Rose Scholar spoiled me. And so now I'm trying my hand with a new tour group called Intrepid Travel. And so already there are some differences that I've experienced between what Rose Scholar would have done and what Intrepid has done so far. The number one thing is no one has reached out other than like an email from Intrepid. So I have no idea who the tour leader is. So I'm going to just show up to the hotel and hopefully see that I have some type of hotel arrangement or at least know that there's going to be someone there to receive me. So that's the first thing. The second thing, Roll Scholar does this cool thing by providing you bag tags and a name tag so that when you get wherever you're going, you already have um, an idea of what people's names are. The other thing I would add is I probably booked this trip a little bit too, um, how would I say, too rashly or, or too fast. And what I mean by that is I just looked at the fact that I was that they had a trip to Colombia and I booked it because it was a decent price. The price was about $2,100 and I'm going to end up going to five different areas of the country. We're going to start off in Bogota and then we're going to go to Salento and then we're going to go to the countryside somewhere in some coffee house. And then after that, we're going to go to what's called, um, we're going to go to Medellin and then eventually end up in Cartagena. But the problem is what it seems to be is just uh, more of a facilitation as opposed to a tour group. Um, I've read the itinerary and there are only two supposed uh, activities that's included and the activities are actually just some um, lectures. Uh, so I'll be curious to see what actually happens um, with the lectures or with the excursions. Now they did provide an itinerary and the itinerary has showed that there's a bunch of optional activities that we can take on on ourselves upon ourselves so i'm going to see what happens with that uh, the last thing that i will say at this point is that after reading through the itinerary a, a little bit more i realized that only the meals that are included are the meals that are included with the hotel stays which by the way um, i only know two of the hotels that we're going to stay in the first one that we're going to stay in in bogota and the last one in cartagena but i have no idea what the other hotels are going to be uh, that I'm going to stay in in between the trip. So again, this should be interesting, especially since I don't know what to expect um, from this point until I get to Bogota. So anyway, I'm going to get on the interstate, head to the Atlanta airport, fly out the international terminal and head to Bogota, Colombia. All right, so first things first, first things first, I probably should have anticipated leaving on a Friday in Atlanta. Um, typically it takes me 40 minutes to get to the airport, but today is about to take me an hour and five minutes because of Atlanta traffic. And because I'm flying on an international flight, I probably should have been at the airport a little bit sooner. Anyway, we're gonna see what happens. Um, my flight boards or my flight departs at 3:53, which is an international flight, which means it actually should start boarding right around three o'clock, and I should get to the airport using international parking ride by 2:30. So hopefully Delta will take my bag <laughs> and get to the airport. Good old Atlanta, like I said, Atlanta is hit or miss. <laughs> So right now, the estimate is that I get to the airport right at 2.03. I'm going to see if it actually happens. So 2.03, I'll see if I can get there.
okay, I actually made it to the international terminal with uh, three minutes to spare. So I was, it was estimated that I would arrive at 2.03 and it's two o'clock. Normally I park at ATL West, but this time around, since I'm flying internationally, I'm parking at the international terminal. And the way the ATL airport does the international terminal is you, it's, it's actually two different uh, terminals. But here at the international terminal, you park and then there's a shuttle that take you to the, to the airport. So hopefully I made it in time so I can get my suitcase on the plane and then uh, maybe I'll have uh, a couple of minutes so I can actually go to the Delta Sky Lounge and have a quick bite to eat since I've been working a whole day and haven't had anything to eat yet and it's 2 p.m. So let's uh, see what happens. Okay, so after a short minute, short three minute ride from the parking garage to the airport, it's time to check in. And I know I really have to use the bathroom, so hopefully this check-in process goes pretty fast. I am first class, so let's see what happens. Bag is dropped, time to use the restroom, and then get in line and see if I can get to the Delta Lounge so I can get me something to eat. Let's find out. Okay, so I just made it through security in the international terminal. So it is now 2.37 and my flight board at 2.58. So I have about 20 minutes to get in the lounge and eat something for the first time today. Um, but if I don't, whatever, they'll feed me on, on the plane. But I'm pretty hungry now. So I'm about to go in the lounge, maybe do a quick tour of the lounge um, and go from there. About to grab me a, something to eat and then um, head to my gate. Alright, right, thank you. Right, you too. All right, headed to the gate. 
looks like the line for the Delta Sky Club got a little longer so I'm lucky I'm lucky that I didn't have to wait too long because I was hungry it is now 2.59 and my flight actually started boarding so I have to make it to Terminal E I'm in Terminal F right now I believe so I have to go on the plane train make it to Terminal E and make it to the to my gate and once I make it to my gate I'll be ready to get on the plane I was going to go on the plane train, but I decided I'd rather walk. I didn't get to the gym today, so I need to use as much energy as possible so I can burn as many calories as possible. And I'm already in F, so walking to E shouldn't be too bad. Hopefully it'll only take a couple of seconds. <laughs> and when I say couple, I mean less than two minutes. So. Go on a hike. say it does feel much better walking through the airport without a roller bag I can maneuver at will I can walk upstairs <laughs> um, so that's pretty cool I made it to Terminal E now it's time to make it to my gate E31 Actually didn't anticipate this uh, <laughs> this far of a walk. Um, I'm still going. So after that long brisk walk, turns out that um, even though the flight was supposed to board at 2.58, get to the gate and nope, it hasn't even started.
All right, four hours later, made it to Bogota, and I am ready. So the flight wasn't too bad. <laughs> um, luckily, I don't sleep on flights, but if I did, I probably would have been upset because it never fails. First class, coach class, it doesn't matter. <laughs> if there's a baby in the seat ahead of you, you're gonna catch it. So there was a young girl who was crying the entire time, <laughs> almost the entire time. Let's say two and a half hour, two and a half hours out of four hours, or well, whatever. I uh, used my time to study some Spanish, to speak to the people. I spoke to the persons. I spoke to the people next to me. Uh, I had some interesting conversations. Learned a lot about where to go, and I'm excited to make it happen. So right now, I'm about to pick up my bag and then meet my driver and head to the hotel. So this is very similar to coming into America from uh, from another country. Um, the good thing is when I come when I go back into America, I'll have a global pre-check um, or global entry rather. But yeah, this is this is crazy. I'm gonna time how long it took me, how, how long it takes me to get through the line. So I probably got in the line right around 7.40. We landed at 7.30, so got at the line at 7.40. And I'm gonna see how long it takes me to get through. By the looks of it, it's probably gonna take an hour. So um, I'll see. Right now it is 7.53. later still in line let's see if I'm going to have to wait another 40 minutes but at least it's not going as far as far down as I thought so the line that I got in did snake so it's actually not as bad as it looked, believe it or not. There's probably five lines that snaked. But that still doesn't mean that I'm not about to wait for another 40 minutes before I get out of the line. Uh, thankfully, I already contacted my driver. My driver said that he is waiting for me at the exit. So once I get out of this line and pick up my suitcase, it should be a smooth transition. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Yay! All right, so it's 8.58. That wasn't too bad. 
wasn't too bad getting through uh, through customs. Just asked a few questions. Am I here for business or tourism or pleasure or whatever? So I let them know. And um, I guess I'm just used to having global entry in America. So anytime you're coming into America, the wait is probably as long, an hour and 10 minutes. Um, or in this case, an hour and 20 minutes. But anyway, I'm, I'm through the line and I'm gonna have to grab my bag and um, see if there's another line that checks my bag. And if, there's an, and if there is not, then I am going to meet up with my driver. All right. <laughs> I got my bag. So let's head through customs and see what I have in store there. No three made it into the customs line. See how long I have to wait in this line. Doesn't look too bad. Maybe a couple of minutes, three or four minutes. Let's see. Nine or three. Let's see me on the other side. All right, I made it. Let me see. Nine or six. Let me go find my driver now. Exit only. Alright, let me text my driver, let him know that I am here. He may have seen me, maybe he didn't. Let me find out. Alright, my driver's here. My guy, my guy John. I'm leaving the airport. We are making it to the car and going to the hotel. So my driver is paying for his ticket. I think he's been waiting. I think he's been waiting for me for about an hour and a half <laughs> uh, because I texted him when I was in the plane and he told me, "Hey, I was I'm near the airport and I'm waiting on you." But I guess he's used to this. And um, to be honest, the Uber is like five dollars here, and they're charging me twenty-two dollars. Plus, if I ever want to drive around the city to see things, it's like twelve dollars a night or or $12 an hour. Still cheap, because if you've ever been to San Diego, it's like six, um, $60 to go five minutes. So I would gladly pay $22 to go 40 minutes here. Um, so I'm pretty excited, I'm pretty tired as well. And um, I'm gonna end this, this night as soon as I get to the hotel, get some sleep, and then wake up, and I actually have a tour tomorrow and that tour is going to um, start the next video, or at least one of many videos that I anticipate making.
I had to break out my uh, my glasses because it's late. But anyway, um, I checked in. I'm about to grab my bags, go up to the room, and end this recording for tonight. Okay, I'll wait for you in the car. Okay, thank you. All right, I made it into the room. It's a little loud outside. Maybe there's some fiesta going on or something. Sounds like a group of friends are having a good time. But anyway, um, that's my travels from Atlanta to Bogota to my hotel. Like always, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy my travels. And hopefully the next nine to 10 days will bring a lot of adventure and a lot of videos that I can populate on the channel. And until next time, like always, be safe and go travel. You have it everywhere to go see. Good night and peace.